dogs aren't allowed to leave this room. We're not allowed to leave? Why is that? Uh, I've said too much. Please just return to the party and remain calm. Remain calm. You got it, buddy. Woo! Thanks, kid. Hey, everyone! This is a sham! We're not guests, we're prisoners! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the analysis of the Amphibia Season 1 finale. I bet a ton of you weren't expecting me to be able to catch up with all 19 friggin' episodes, but I somehow managed to do that in two days. I knew since it was Season 1, I didn't have to make an entire analysis over each and every individual episode, much like Gravity Falls or almost every show. But before we... <clears throat> hop our way into this finale, I have a special surprise to present to you all once more. I am here to show you all the wondrous feature of Amino itself, Amino Stories. Like before, I for one have already begun my stories where you can come over and join me on Amino in order to chat with me about theories, potential videos, and much more. Oh, but it's not just about chatting. It will also consist of exclusive videos about different shows such as Amphibia and DuckTales. And heck, if you all want more Star Versus, I might consider that as well. Just remember that Amino is free to install and you can search me up by typing in TNBT. Plus, it doesn't even have to be for me, because no matter who you are, there should be a story just for you. Now as for today's video, we're going to be discussing about the episode Reunion, and I'm happy to say that this finale was worth the watch, and only got me invested into the show even more. One major thing for sure, however, is that within the finale, neither the Calamity Box or Marcy was shown, and even though I clearly didn't do an entire analysis on the subject, Hop Pop buries it in part B of episode 16. Thankfully, he just does this for cautionary reasons after reading about how dangerous it could potentially be in the hands of the wrong person, or, well, Amphibian. Surely it'll be brought up again in Season 2, but it sounds like that's gonna be the main concern for the future of the story. As for Marcy, I bet that they're keeping her away from us, the audience, as a reveal for where she is until next season as well. Unlike what DuckTales did by showing us exactly where Della was within a single season. From the beginning, we were finally revealed what the school logo on Anne's shirt was. It stood for St. James School, though I'm sure the full name is St. James Middle School in order to correspond with the school's logo. And the three months ago flashback only showed us how other students would treat Anne, but specifically a girl by the name of Maggie who even has the audacity to bully her on her own birthday. Also, just like how I feared since the first episode of Amphibia, at least one of Anne's supposal friends weren't necessarily the greatest influence on how she saw friendship to be. But this just showed how Sasha in particular was manipulative, selfish, and was obviously using Anne's trust for her own benefits. Going as far as dragging Anne along with her, skipping school, and causing Anne to miss her very own family birthday party. Sasha, I really like to, but Anne, this isn't cute anymore. We are meeting up with Marcy right now. End of discussion. And who would have known that just a simple choice between her friends or her family would have gotten her into some serious trouble? We're then shown the present day with the totes and Wartwood after Sasha must have told Grime who shoe it was that he had found from before. Because how on earth else would he be able to know exactly what her name was? But that is unless it was just the toads from the episode Toad Text that were responsible for spilling the beans. So are we gonna tell the captain about that creature we found? Oh, we're gonna tell the captain everything. And before I go any further, I need to mention how Sasha manages to become Grimes' most noble assistant. Within part B of the 10th episode, Prison Break, a giant bird lands on the property of Grimes' castle, and so the soldiers have to somehow fend it off. And after the damage was done to the prison's walls, Sasha surprisingly comes back and helps fight it off even after having the ability to run away. But it was also devilishly intelligent since this is followed by Sasha teaching Grime on how to command his loyal army. However, she does so by once again using her persuasive and somewhat manipulative attitude. This was a great way for her to get on the right foot with Grime, but it was admittedly her way of thinking as well that kind of attracted her towards him. In the finale, she even describes Grime's reasoning for waging war against frogs like so. So you've probably already noticed that the toads in this valley have one job, to rule over the frogs. And lately, those frogs have been stepping out of line. Yeah, sounds familiar? Well, of course, this is kind of like what the mayor of Wartwood was expressing, saying that apparently toads are predominantly the superior race. 
You certainly gave this toad a run for his money. Good thing you didn't win, though, huh? <laughs> a frog beating the toad. That would have made headlines. But there's more to it than just that. This is most likely Sasha's perspective on how she sees some of her helpless friends, such as Anne, for example, feeling as if people like her are the smaller branch of the tree. Now, I'm not accusing Sasha of being a racist, of course, but instead a friend that unfortunately likes to have control and bullies the people around her to fill in some lost aspect in her life possibly has something to do with her parents or family back at home. Anyways, I'm so busy basically giving you all a lesson in psychology that it's time that I get back to talking about the episode itself. Whenever the Toads first arrive to Wartwood, they take them inside of Grimes' castle in order to secretly trap them and separate the frogs from Anne. I'm sure that it was intentional so that Sasha could convince Anne to betray the frogs, and she even had some pretty great leverage, stating that if she were to let the Toads take over, Anne could return back home. My only question, however, is how did she know that Grime knew how to transport their way back. Does he even know that Anne possessed the Calamity Box? Did Sasha tell him that too? And within the episode, they clearly had shown that Sasha, while in command with Grime, was able to all of a sudden have access to earthly foods such as pizza, burgers, fries, hot dogs, pancakes, you name it. When coincidentally, Sasha was not originally given these types of foods when first thrown in prison. Now, of course, this is most likely because Grime at first was strictly keeping her as his prisoner. However, after her promotion, she was treated more high class, but... That's not all. Did they get the food from her world, or was Grime and his men able to somehow make all of that food themselves while hunting in the world of Amphibia? I honestly believe that this was a small hint showing us that Grime did know his way back on Earth, and the crabs in the world of Amphibia probably would be much bigger if they did exist in that world. Praying mantises in this world were the size of practically a bear, and you expect me to believe that crabs are the same size as the ones on Earth? Now another part of Sasha's speech, including the differences between toads and frogs, was how Hot Pot managed to become Grimes' main target of execution due to him being called as the revolutionary frog of the town. And I honestly love how they set this up so well. Throughout the entirety of season 1, since it was the introduction of the show and its characters, it made sure that it focused on the growth of each character and learned the many dimensions of certain characters as well, while in the meantime also subliminally letting us witness Hot Pop's many stances against Toads, the superiors. He's even revealed to be completely unaware of him being a revolutionary revolutionary figure, just as we were. Well, it's a good looking poster though. I'm gonna die! Until when we're shown the evidence, and then it makes perfect sense, especially the boxing match. Hot Pop punched the crap out of Toadstool. Continuing on, Anne eventually tries her best to warn the others about the rebellion situation, and so she manages to sneak her way back into the banquet and attempts to escape upstairs the castle. She's then stopped by Sasha and Grimes' soldiers though, and has to do what she should have done years ago fight off the friend that was actually the biggest bully of them all. But Anne doesn't come into that realization until Sprig himself defends her before she starts listening to Sasha and notices Sasha's controlling ways. And what Grime conveys to Sasha next just simply confirms how the both of them think similarly and how their ways of treating others they feel are lesser than them can be quite demeaning. You've given me plenty of advice. Now let me give you some. Stamp this out. Make her yield. Fail and nothing will ever be the same. So Sasha unsurprisingly agrees and goes into battle and herself. And one detail that I found interesting was how the red moon is no longer a crescent shape, but now a full moon instead. And I'm only guessing that this means that it really was just a simple moon on Amphibia. And I came to this conclusion after Anne says this in the episode. It just occurred to me I've been eating bugs for a month. Yeah, so after a full month, the moon probably made its full rotation, but didn't the beginning show us three months earlier? Was there a time skip when they were transferred over to this world, or...? I guess another explanation for this would be that Anne just now started eating bugs after two months of being on Amphibia. Anyways, back to the fight scene. Another thing is the lighting between both Anne and Sasha when they're face to face. The red light displayed from Sasha's perspective giving off an eerie bloodthirsty vibe. While Anne's side on the other hand is a calm, yellow innocent light while Sasha even looks down at her, much like how she literally looks down at Anne. Eventually the fight ends with Anne scraping Sasha's cheek for the sake of seeing Sprig and the rest of her new family and defends them by any means necessary. And even though Anne wins, Grime of course takes Hot Pop anyways and nearly feeds him to the giant Venus flytrap. That is until miraculously Wally mistakenly misread Anne and thought that she wanted him to blow up the castle even though they were still on top. It saves Hot Pop from Grime's clutches but basically puts everyone else else in danger, especially Sasha who was saved by Anne before Sasha eventually lets go, while this song is playing. <laughs> 
Sometimes in my life. Yeah, I definitely was expecting that, but I believe there was a small detail behind the song choice. Obviously, it was a great way to send out the message that the both of them need someone to lean on. However, Sasha lets go during this segment of the song. For it won't be long till I'm gonna need someone to lean on. Believe it or not, this last part of the song that we hear is specifically for Sasha. Anne already has much support from the planters and practically all of Wartwood, but Sasha is back with Grime, surrounded by no one to truly show her the same compassion. In the end, Anne is later on comforted by the planters and returns home to Wartwood in order to plan out their next adventures on solving how to return back home. And this just leaves us with so many other things to look forward to in the next season of the show. Where's Marcy? When is Anne going to get her freaking shoe back? Does Grime know how to get back to Earth? Will Sasha reform after realizing what she had done? Are the colorful mushrooms ingredients to powering up the mystical music box? Am I still once again asking too many questions? But alas, this show already presents you with the main problem of Amphibia utter complete separation. Anne being separated from her family while the toads being separated from the frogs when it comes to their normalized stature of living. It even says on the sign for Wartwood, slow to accept, even slower to respect. This has been the next big thing, and you just watched the analysis for Amphibia's season one finale. It's been quite a long journey, and I can't wait till the next season. Peace.